Hey up lads and lasses, Danfi here, back again with some more GR2 content for you today. So today is the last of the basic fitting series. That means we are looking at the carriers, which... Eh, they're in an odd spot within the game. So the carriers are the largest ships in the game. They're the only ships uh, that are able to fit the UAVs, which are your fighters. And... Um, Got the best tanks in the game in general, and yeah, they're just they're, they're in a weird spot because of the UAVs and how they work, and they generally are bonus for that UAV damage, and the fact that UAVs are really low damage, they're less damaging than battleships. So your battleships are your high DPS ships, but your carriers are more your sort of tank. Now, with uh, only being able to hit 100 cost, uh, that limits you with your fleet uh, compositions a little bit. So you're stuck in a position where you can either run three carriers and a destroyer, which will be pretty low damage overall, but you will be able to sit there and tank a lot of damage. Or you run three battleships or a mixture of carrier and battleships. So... Due to that, you don't see them too often, uh, normally one of in a fleet, or you won't see them at all. Um, there is a possibility for the three carrier fleet, like I just mentioned, but I have yet to see it in-game. Um, I do know somebody who was working on it, I don't know if he managed to finish it or not, uh, but yeah. So we'll jump into it. I only have a couple of carriers. I don't particularly like running them. I am on the three battleship side of things, uh, or one carrier, two battleship side of things, more than the multiple carriers. So I don't really have that many carriers at all. I've got a few unlocked, I just don't use them or run them. So first off, we'll have a look at a frost. I'm pretty sure I've got a frost unlocked in this account, yeah. Probably got nothing on it. Pretty much got nothing on it. So the Frost is your first federal carrier. This is the easiest one to farm. You can get most of its parts within exploration. And yeah, it looks very much like a carrier from, you know, current times in the water and they've just stuck some giant engine on the back and there you go, it's done. Got even like the flight deck and everything, which sort of doesn't make sense to me, but there you go. So, again, these are the only ships that can fit UAVs, and this one is on the better side of the carriers because it has the ability to run as a support carrier. The reason for that is it has the very same plug uh, warship feature sorry, as the Centurion. It has this one, the buff duration of the devices to allies increased by 30%. I believe it goes up to 70%. This, with a bit of cooldown or just maxing out a global CN, means that you can have your buff up permanently on all of your ships within your fleet, which does make it a very strong ability. It also has uh, UAV dur durability improved by 30%. I'm not sure what this goes up to, nor does it matter. Uh, this is due to the fact that no players really run anti-air, and if they do, the anti-air doesn't really do enough damage to... Uh, deal with anything anyway. On top of that, even if the AI runs anti-air, they also don't seem to be able to do enough damage to kill off a max out UAV anyway as well. So, yeah, and anti-air, just remove them from the game, devs, if you ever watch this. Uh, it has got the steel barriers, which all the Federation ships have. This is quite good, less so the bigger the ship, because this percentage uh, increases and it becomes worse at that point. Uh, to the point where on this ship, if it does get hit by a tactical nuke or anything like that, or a dust maker, it pretty much does take full damage from it. Uh, this is due to the fact that its durability maxed out is pretty damn high. Shield-wise, they are okay on shields. This is more of a hull tank, uh, but we'll go into devices quick anyway. Subsystems, it has two UAV subsystems, one for crit rate, one for projectile UAVs. That means shadows, uh, so I do have a shadow, I believe. Not shadows. What are these called? Falcons? Falcons! <laughs> so, uh, Falcons are your go-to UAV for this ship. Although, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the game, 
UAVs struggle a lot with damage. And I'll show you a little bit of that later on. But it has a tactical cooldown on here as well. So you can fit a global CN down here to get this tactical cooldown. I don't recommend it. Uh, you can fit your global CN up in this slot. Okay, you're not using this and you have blocked off a couple of slots here that you could have got onto this UAV um, augmentation system. But if you put it up here, it lets you get eight uh, T3s on here, I believe it is in total. I can't remember the exact shapes. But it is possible to get 83 weapons of your choice on here, be it UAVs. So you can have eight UAVs and a global CN. If you put it down here, it limits you to six, I believe. Um, although two of them, you do get to have the ability to have two on this uh, augmentation system, this subsystem. But it's not necessarily worth it. In light of UAVs being utter trash and poor damage, you can just stack this up with a load of other tacticals. For example, you could have your global CN up here. You could have a tactical uh, torpedo here, either a um, comet or a dust maker will fit quite nicely in the slot. You'll also get this uh, tactical augmentation cooldown then. You can um, also then fit one of the four slot tacticals up here, such as Reapers, I believe will get that shape and I'm not sure if oh, you do have that shape as well. So yeah, you can definitely get Reapers or you can definitely get Honeycombs or something. One of the four slot tacticals on here. Gives you a little bit of room to get some extra weapons on here, but generally not worth it. Uh, you can run the, uh, again, the Global CN up here, or you can go down to one of the T, uh, T3 CNs that only go to three slot. Uh, that will also work on here. I don't currently have any on hand. And you can fit it down here to get this cooldown reduction. That cooldown reduction, when the uh, don't last quite as long because they're not at tier, uh, technically tier seven, I believe the global CN is. Um, the global, the cooldown at that point will help trying to keep the buff duration up or the buff up for as long as possible on your ship. So that is another option you can take. I recommend again global CN and I'd recommend rails on here. Uh, I think rails are the best weapon in the game for ships that don't have natural penetration and you want to try and get as much damage out as possible. So yeah, uh, it's an okay ship. It works, it does the job of a support carrier which is quite a niche uh, role because most of the others can't run the support role quite as well as the frost So yeah, it's not a bad carrier if you want to run it That means you don't have to run a support cruiser uh, if you run the carrier two battleship cruiser So you can then therefore run damage tornadoes or damage uh, fell onto variants Next up we have the revenant the ugliest ship in the game I think it's one of it's got to be one off. I, I don't know what the hell they've decided to do with this one. There is some um, stuff, and it was on the old Facebook group, and I have managed to grab hold of the images before it disappeared. And it's the um, sort of prototype drawings of some of these ships. And they were basing this off, I think it was the uh, Dominus from EVE Online. Or... Dominix, Dominix, the giant potato. And yeah, they, they have captured a giant potato. They just made it slightly pointier. Good job. <laughs> this has been uh, butchered a little bit because I did remove some UAVs off this ship. Uh, but this is the pirate carrier. It's the highest possible damaging carrier in the game. I believe uh, someone showed me one of these doing close to 3 million damage. Or actually a little bit lower than that. I think about two and a half million damage in two minutes. And that was running a um, mixture of rail guns. I oh, know it wasn't. It was running a mixture of UAVs and I believe it was cruise missiles or HE. One of the two. Uh, the idea behind that build was uh, utilize as much as you can of these subsystems with UAVs. Uh, again, we got Kinetic here, but this is just a standard crit rate one, so you can potentially roll EM or Thermal on here to run Flames or Shadows if you'd rather. 
Off the front one though, that is a kinetic damage subsystem, so you do want to be ideally running your Falcons on here. So yeah, I believe it's, um, I think it's five missiles, and then you fill up the rest with UAVs. And yeah, it's good damaging. The reason it is good damage is it has the standard uh, attack battleship stern and flanks with 24% additional damage, which comes on all of the pirate ships. It's got very good tank due to the when durability above 676%, damage increased by 20%. This drops down, uh, I believe, as well, the durability, not just the damage increase. So I believe this goes down to about 50% or somewhere around there. Uh, and the damage increase, I'm not too sure. I think it goes around 30%. It might be a bit more than that. But that does put it in a position where you've got two warship features adding a lot of percent damage. And you have the uh, first 18 damage received are invalid. This means that when it gets hit, it, the first 18 instances of damage are ignored. This does make it pretty tanky. Again, carriers being quite tanky in the first place because they have higher durability than battleships does help here. Uh, but yeah, again, shields maxed out here. Uh, I don't believe I have. Yeah, I don't have 40 points in shield mods in this one, but uh, it has got pretty good shields as well. Uh, I forgot to mention for the frost, if you're running UAVs, do make sure you put a UAV uh, plug-in on here. Ideally, the Assault UAV, that seems to be best in slot, uh, increases your damage of UAVs by 10%. Uh, due to the fact that you can also mix and match a little bit because UAVs don't count as weapon uh, plugins, you can run a kinetic plug-in plug -in on here as well as your armor, giving you two utility slots for energy or something like that. Again, we're gonna mimic that over here. I don't have an assault, I have this one, unfortunately. So do run a um, a uh, UAV, preferably assault. Again, assault is best in slot. Standard armor is probably best in slot for carriers due to the fact they have a high natural durability amount anyway, so the added durability and then a percentage added in durability will increase its armor significantly significantly higher than, uh, say, creature armor or anything like that. Again, you can add yourself a weapon one. I am running, um, or I was running when I was running this ship, a uh, Dustmaker on here, so the extra little torpedo damage might help. If you can get a calling one, probably better if, uh, for running a tactical torpedo on here. But again, if you are running the missile mix with UAVs, you want to be running a missile plug-in, preferably again, probably the 10% damage one. And yep, two utility slots. Reform-wise, it does reform quite well for um, uh, just resisting everything. It has uh, kinetic, thermal, and EM resistances. I believe the frost does the same. I know the frost is more damage, uh, yeah, with a bit of shield capacity and stuff like that. But Kinetic damage, thermal resistance, and EM damage does make it pretty tanky. Uh, the EM resistance is really nice on this ship due to the fact that pirates are naturally weaker to EM damage. So this does help its tank quite a bit. Critical strike rate, and yeah, it's not much in the way of damage within its reforms because they're pretty much all in their warship features. We then have an Immortal. Uh, this is my you will not shoot your guns ever build. Um, the front here, I'd usually run maybe Reapers or something like that in that four slot. Uh, you can actually fit another energy weapon on here, another uh, XNT if you wanted to, or even a deke on there. Uh, it does fit, so there you go. On here I'm running a large EN field and a lot of e e uh, XNT. I keep trying to say EXNT for some reason. XNT lasers on here due to the fact that these have chance to make the target energy loss. With this amount on here, plus the bottom system given a weapon abnormal effect, increased chances, you pretty much guarantee that if this energy NT hits a ship and these XNTs just keep following up, that ship won't be firing anything, especially if it's a laser bow. If you have somebody who has, uh, for an example, a Legion and you really, really don't like it, 
run this, that legion will never fire its weapons the entire fight after your first volley of X and T's and the uh, EN field hits. It's kind of funny. Um, these aren't the best tanks, and this is due to the fact that the Immortal and the whole line of ships, of the uh, Primal Tech ships, are centered around uh, shield tanking. The biggest problem with shield tanking at the moment is due to the fact that the current meta means monsters are everywhere and monsters have penetration, ignoring your shields. I've seen countless immortals, including my own, getting killed and the shield still being near 50-60%, so... Yeah, they're not in the best position at the moment. I don't recommend Immortals too much uh, for PvP. For PvE, however, these are fantastic ships. They take forever for the enemy uh, NPCs to take down, and they will just soak up damage for ages. They also seem to have a larger shield radius uh, than other ships, including other carriers, which means that you can use them to shield tank your other ships a little bit more easily. So, um, yeah, some nice benefits with having this Immortal within a fleet. Plug-in Y... Oh, uh, I do not recommend running UAVs on here. Uh, due to the fact that it's both subsystems at the rear are laser weapons, and its frontal subsystem is the only UAV, and you're limited on space because you do want to try and run tacticals. Um, I mean, you could drop this XNT, for example, and run a Shadow here, and then run three more sh shadows at the front, bringing you to four shadows or a lunar eclipse, maybe, or three shadows and a lunar, uh, and three six XNT. Does put you in an interesting position. You can also drop these for etherics. They all are um, EM specific damage, and that's what the reforms for. If you come down here, uh, it's got laser thermal damage, which you can ignore for the most part, but EM damage from lasers has increased. Also, as a flat EM increase as well. This will affect UAVs and the lasers. Uh, again, shield capacity and your standard durability does make this one hell of a tanky ship. Again, 30,000 uh, durability here. If you look at the shield tank, your massive shield tanks in comparison to pretty much everything else within its category. Again, this has not got the... Oh, it has got the extra 45,000. It hasn't got a maxed out um, captain, he's only th favour three. So maxed out, it's going to be considerably harder to kill. Uh, there is another variant of this, and that's a more damaging variant, where you drop all these uh, XNTs and you run a mixture of Gorse, uh, sorry, Gorse, Rail, and, yeah, Rail and Gorse. And uh, you will get a higher damage output, but you do lose the energy drain effect. Um, I've tried both. I prefer the XNT for certain situations, but obviously the damaging variant is better in more situations because more damage is always going to be better in the majority of situations where draining enemy ships doesn't work sometimes. We then uh, move over to the Fenrir. This is the best build I've found for running on a Fenrir. I unfortunately don't have a maxed out captain to really show you what this is capable of. Um, but it does do a solid bit of damage. So the frontal subsystem gives you thermal damage, which makes it really nice for flames. So as you can see, we're running uh, three flames here. Uh, you then have a tactical augment and you have the, one of the weird uh, abnormal state uh, subsystems. I really don't like these too much, but there you are. So in this position, um, I run a Lunar Eclipse. This is to give me uh, EM resistances minus 15%. Currently, the Void might actually be better because it has the same effect as XNTs, but a higher damage output than Shadows. So uh, if you can try and fit uh, Voids on here, you're going to get an added Energy Drain plus more damage over Shadows. So that's definitely a possibility to run two extra shadows down here, or even three shadows down, uh, so shadows, three voids down here uh, to get some extra damage output. I personally quite like running the UAV's Assault CN on here. You can run cooldown. Uh, it does run cooldown on here as well, so you can try and keep this up as often as possible, increasing your entire damage output. 
This does leave you two slots in this position here, which um, is probably best with this little tiny shield rep. You could potentially run something like a transition device or something like that to try and keep your kite distance available. And if something gets too close, jump away. So that is also an option as well. Plug-in wise, again, if you've got it, you probably want Assault uh, CN on here. And the reason I go full UAV on here is because of this Warship feature. When releasing UAV, there is a 30% probability to release additional UAV. That means when you're launching all eight, which is the maximum, maximum amount of UAVs you can have without a specific plugin, uh, you have a 30% chance of getting extra UAVs out which deal the same amount of damage as the one they copy. So in theory this is kind of like a 30% damage increase. It calculates a little bit closer to about 45.5% damage increase on average as it doesn't always trigger at 30%. Sometimes you only get one or two UAVs out. Sometimes I've had I have seen upwards of six and seven UAVs out at a time this is the ultimate in uav carriers it also has a snake for a head which makes it kind of cool in my opinion uh 32 percent of thermal damage converted to shields makes it extremely tanky um if this thing gets hit with decons and stuff like that it takes most of that decon damage turns it into shields and then your shields are back up um, so yeah, it does suffer though, if it gets energy drained, it puts in a really bad situation and can ruin this ship pretty badly. Probability of causing normal state increased by 46%. Now the weird thing is abnormal state does not seem to include the lunar eclipse's EM damage. Um, it's, it's an odd one to, it just doesn't seem to work properly. In my testing of this ship, this does not seem to go off as often as it should do. Um, again, the way EM resistance negatives are calculated on enemies isn't particularly good, so you could drop this for voids, like I mentioned. This does affect your lunar eclipse, uh, your flame, sorry, extremely well. And uh, just these three flames can genuinely keep up the fire damage uh, almost permanently on an enemy ship, which does make it very, very good. Damage wise, again, it's lacking and it's just the position carriers are in and there's not much we can do about it. Uh, unless they give UAVs a decent buff to make them worth a bit more, uh, UAVs and carriers are not going to be your damage output for certain. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to run UAVs, don't run a Fenrir because that's pretty much all it's really good at. Last but not least, I do not own this one, so we are going to have to run over here to the SSA, and we have the Phoenix. This kind of looks like a giant dis floating disco or hotel to me. Um, it does not look like a combat ship at all. It has this weird ability. Uh, so one of its warship features is this one here, and it's um, Pen in the first position. When in the first position of the fleet as the flagship aircraft, all UAV damage in the team increased by 22%. What this means is when you're uh, preparing to fight and you choosing your ships and where to put them, if this is in the left handmost slot, so the slot that would be over here, the rest of your UAV damaging ships or ships that have UAVs on will get a 22% damage increase. This is where the three carrier situation has appeared from a little bit, um, specifically the Fenrir style, where you run a single Phoenix on your leftmost slot, two Fenrirs and a destroyer of your choice, probably a Lynx, uh, as they have probably the higher damage output. Below 40% durability, resource 40% battleship durability. This is basically... Um, Captain Leia or Princess Leia uh, on as a warship feature for itself, for its own battleship. It doesn't do it to the rest of your fleet, only itself, which doesn't make it particularly great in my opinion. It also has the flank damage reduction obsidian armor, uh, which is standard across the SSA line of ships, which there is only two of. Now it's again got 
a weird shape, which makes this very difficult to fit. Uh, UAV crit on the top, tactical cooldown in the bottom, and laser in the middle. For something that wants to buff UAVs, and only having a single UAV subsystem, whereas, say, the Fenrir has at least two, it puts in a weird situation where you do want to be trying to play around a little bit with this and again the tactical cooldown if you're running the Fenrir like I just showed you this tactical cooldown doesn't matter too much due to the fact that you're going to run the uh, UAV damage boosting ability on your Fenrir probably instead of this as it fits quite nicely in here. We're on here four slot you know you could put it there and then it leaves you these weird two slot over here it, it, it just doesn't fit in a nice way again for the uav augmentation system you can run two uavs across the top here and then two of the triangle ones is probably your best bet here this at least gives you four uavs but then you the rest of the uavs that you do put on the ship won't be buffed any longer lasers again not in the best situation at the moment they are lacking in damage compared to other weapon systems so yeah I generally can't recommend a Phoenix unless you are trying to go Phoenix to Fenrir Lynx. And yeah, even at that point, I'd say maybe even adding an extra Fenrir in would probably give more damage than this actually provides to the rest of your ships, considering its, ab its inability to produce any damage itself. So yeah, um... Again, carriers, odd place. One in a fleet is quite nice. It does act as a very, very good tank, especially within tacticals. However, the three of carrier, I haven't seen anyone manage to pull it off yet uh, to a degree where it seems viable compared to, say, three battleship or one carrier, two battleship. So if you have managed to see do that or have pulled it off, do leave a comment below if you have any other build ideas. Uh, for these ships, again, do leave uh, a carrier a comment below. And I've just realized we've actually missed out on one ship. We've missed out on the King. The King is an odd one again. Or the Monarch, if you watch the updates that they bring out, because they keep calling it the Monarch. It runs UAVs, uh, missiles, and I believe this is again UAV. This runs quite nicely with a mixture of flame and five missiles. It specifically tries to run Jim in that situation and it does pull eh, okay DPS considering it's tank. Again, 40,500 durability there. Uh, I believe that's max, right? Or close to. I don't think they actually get much higher than that. Oh no, they don't. Never mind. Um. Sorry about that. So yeah, they, um, it's it's an odd one. Again, it's got this gold coating, which I think is kind of a waste of a warship feature. It has the damage increase by 32% when there is no enemy unit within 400 yards. It suffers, suffers from the same issue that the fog has, which um, means that it randomly just decides to go within 400 yards all the bloody time, loses this damage output, drops its damage down. Uh, when energy is next level, then fifth. When energy is below 50%, the energy recovery speed increases by 130%. I'm not sure if this triggers multiple times or not, or if this is a one-off. I haven't been able to test it. I don't. Yeah, in the over a year of playing, I don't think I own a king, or ever wanted one. Um, the build I've seen for this runs, uh, I believe, a tactical honeycomb. A, and then a mixture of HE to try and keep the fire damage up as high as possible and cruise as they are the highest damaging missiles. And again, it's running uh, multiple flames there again to try and keep the damage up, plus flames being the main thermal damage uh, UAV. Don't know why they give you falcons on here. It's weird, they give you falcons on here when this is the flame ship. And then they give you flames on the Frost, which is a kinetic damage ship instead of the Falcon. Either way, yep, King, not a bad ship. I have seen some good damage numbers from this. Between this and the Dragon are the highest damaging uh, ships. Again, 
This is going to lose 32% of its damage quite often, which sucks amazingly, but what can you do? Again, we'll try and end this again now, because that was the last carrier. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Friday I can't be streaming, Saturday I won't be streaming this week. The streaming is going to pick up next month a bit more. Uh, I've had a lot on for work, so I've not been able to get around to it. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.